everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. So I'm going to talk through some of my best practice tips for organizing your models in this tutorial. Now, what we're looking at here is a resource or a, an entire report that's been developed for the next Enterprise DNA Learning Summit. So uh, for those watching this video as it is released, that's in a couple of weeks time. Um, but why I thought I wanted to break out into this organization tutorial is because it is so important in this particular model that I've developed and that you can get your hands on if you, if you register for the, uh, for the summit. Uh, I'll leave a, a link below in the description if you do want to register for that. But the model is so detailed and, and, and so, much, so many calculations are being done uh, on top of the model and some of the supporting tables that have gone into this, uh, uh, into this report that it is absolutely essential to follow some of these best practice tips around organizing things. Now, I'm going to first go to the data model here. Now, check out check out how detailed this is. Now, first of all, first of all, this is this is what I call a, the core a core measure, right? And so, um, many of you have listened to tutorials before. You've got uh, you you would have you would know that I talk a lot about how to set up your your core model here in as simple way as possible. So, look up tables up the top and fact tables down the bottom. Now, you see here that we're actually dealing with. Um, multiple fact tables and some quite different fact tables and that's why uh, some of the material I'm going to go through in the learning summit is really really going to be interesting you know things like financial details um, budgeting uh, you know and, and comparing and consolidating them in with say your transaction data and your sales data so it's really really interesting stuff um, but if you set it up like this, it becomes a lot more intuitive because this could be just, you, know, you could have tables and relationships all over the place, but you'll see here that I've laid them out in a simple and intuitive way. And even though what is being done is very complex, you know, in terms of the calculations and the reorganization, etc., it can happen and it can happen in quite an intuitive way. But as I expand out here, check out how detailed, see how many tables and groups of, of things that I've got in this model. Now, I've also got down here what I call supporting tables. So I put I put them down um, somewhere in my model where I can locate them all together. I don't just have them everywhere uh, in this section. I also have some tables which I've hidden, which is part of this integrated financial reporting that I'm going to go through in the summit, which is going to be um, so enlightening. You'll be amazed at what you can achieve here. But what I've done is I've created two tables of, of very different data, and then I've consolidated them into this table up here uh, and I'm going to show you how you, you can actually do that during the summit. And w basically what I'm doing there is I'm trying to consolidate financials, so revenue revenue data and expense data. But I put those two down in an area which is very easy to uh, find and locate, etc. And then what I do here is measure tables. This is another one of my um, big tips, right? Measure tables are so are so key to organizing your model, and you'll see why in a second. But what I also do is I put those intuitively to the side here as well. Now I do this on all my models, okay? So that's, and, and I highly, highly, highly recommend doing something similar. Think about how complex, and I see this all the time. All of all the enterprise DNA members uh, who post on the support forum a lot of the time, the model is just is just a bit of a mess, and that's mainly because it's hard to know what to do in here when you first start out. But if you can take some of these simple tips that, that I utilize and implement them in your own model, I'm very confident that uh, even these sort of changes will make things um, so much simpler for you, so much more intuitive and, and, and simple to understand what's going on. What I like to be able to do, regardless of what data I'm working on or which um, data scenario uh, I'm trying to uh, work over, is I need to be able to visualize in my mind as I'm building my report and writing DAX calculations what is actually going on in my model. So if a filter is put in place, I know that it flows down to a calculation which I might be doing in my sales table or across my budgeting table or even in combination of those two tables. So being able to visualize these things uh, in your mind as they are actually happening is so key. Now, my last tip that I wanted to go over, uh, for uh, which will certainly um, be drilled in, you know, and, and be gone into much further during the learning summit, is measure tables. So you see here on the right-hand side, look how many measure tables I actually have. A significant number, right? A significant number. And the reason being is, check out if I open these up. So we've got some attrition analysis. We've got some other attrition visual. Uh, 
measures. We've got some averages per day, budgeting. Um, I go, got my key measures, which is a long list. I've got my uh, time comparison, which is a long list. So what I'm trying to show you there is that you can create a lot of measures. You could easily create 30, 40, 50 measures in your model. And if you do not put those into me measure groups or measure tables, then you can get very lost very quickly. You'll be searching for um, your measures. Uh, you won't know, uh, you know where to find them. And just, it just makes it your life. It makes your consumer's life. It makes, it makes um, any person who uses your model post you, it makes their life so much harder. Um, and it's key to be able to you know, simplify things as much as you can here you know, as possible, trying to speed up your development, etc. And this is one really key way, especially if you name your actual groups really well too, which I always try and do. I try and make them uh, sound very and look very intuitive. And it's so easy for me to say, okay, if I want to compare time periods, right? Well, I've got my time comparison. Um, I've got my time comparison uh, measure group and I can just utilize that and the drag and drop into all my visual visualizations. All of my measures are also named really well. Um, so, you know, my titles get created quickly, uh, so on and so forth. My axes get my axes get created quickly, the names get created quickly. So, um, so if you implement just those small things, just these things, you can improve um, your, your speed to development and, and I believe your development in Power BI that much more. So, so those are my best practice tips. Um, I just wanted to review them in a sort of a, a small breakout session. I'm obviously going to go into a lot of these in a lot more detail during the Learning Summit. So you know, certainly if you're watching this video and you want to learn more about Power BI and my best practice tips and a lot of analytical um, a, a analytical work, great analytical work that you can do in Power BI, um, as well as great visualization techniques, etc., um, then you certainly want to register for this event. It's going to be a really, really good one. Um, so all the very best. Um, hopefully you like this one uh, if you do want to register i'll put a link below in the description um, other than that uh, hope hopefully you like these tips i hope i'm hoping that you can use them uh, in your own um, in your own models